Well, I've noticed a lot of you guys in the comments can't understand why I work in Imperial. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the channel once again. Right, well, first of all, I've had a few comments on people saying, why is it always so quiet in your workshop? Um, well, firstly, because I have to turn the radio off, can't have any music going on in the background. And secondly, I sort of have to do it while John's not doing any work because um, he does like a hammer, the man. So I try and do it when I've got a little bit of a quiet period. Anyway, first job of today is the Golf VR6 engine that we had on the pallet and came in just before Christmas. So here it is, it's set up on our Delapina Hone. Um, as you can see, I've set it up on our milling machine over there today and I've refaced the top of the block. Now, if I rebore a block, I normally reface it afterwards because if it's an original block face, because our boring bar sets the parallels go on the block face as opposed to the base, um, I like to set it up on the original face um, just in case there's any slight variation and then I know the bore is true to the original face which would be dead parallel to the base. Um, so, but because we're honing this, because this narrow V here, we, we can't obviously set it up on our, our boring bar because we're not going to be boring it straight. So I have to hone these out. Now it's a horrible, long, laborious job. Um, so I faced it first, as you can see, just a nice little three thou lick over that has, has cleaned it up nicely. So I've set it up on a bit of a Heath Robinson angle here. So believe it or not, those bores are sort of parallel now to our home. And um, we're gonna go about honing it out plus half a mil. So this is an 84 mil bore standard and we're going to be going out to 84 and a half. Now, we haven't got the pistons yet, and which doesn't really matter. I mean, usually, if we're boring it to 84 and a half, then the 84 and a half is exactly what you would bore it to. And as I've said to you before, the running clearance would be less on the piston skirt. But we never take that for granted. I've said this many a times to you before. We never take anything for granted. And sometimes we have had pistons that are supposed to run a, a greater running clearance than standard. And if you bored it to the, to the round figure bore, so 84 and a half, you wouldn't have enough. So it, it needs to be sort of opened up another thou or so. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bore this to the round figure and I think we may be going Wozner pistons on this. So what I normally do on the Wozners is give it plus half a thou and that's, you know, that'll be perfect for what it is. Cause this is, it's not a competition, it's just a fast road, but um, I normally just give it half a thou over the top, but you're allowed half a thou to a thou anyway. So um, yeah, I'm gonna persist in slogging on with this. As I say, it's to remove half a mil is not too bad. I've had it before where we've had to remove about two mil out of these, which is 80 thou with the, with the coarse stones. And it's, God, it is a nightmare. The trouble is when the block, you get to about 20 thou, which is half a mil, and the block starts heating up and it's, it becomes, once the stones get hot, they become less and less efficient. And it's, you have to keep waiting for it to cool. It's a nightmare. But... Fortunately, we've only got half a mil. We've got the core stones in here, as you can see. And these are the, the fine stones, as you can see there. So we're gonna whip out the majority of the material with these stones and sort of leave probably a thou or two in there for the, for the, to finish it once it's cool with the, the fine stones. Right, so I've set our bore gauge and 84 and a half is little and on the two, big and on the zero. So what I always do 
when I do these is obviously it's an 84 and a half mil bore. I convert that to Imperial. And um, so 84 and a half in Imperial equates to 3.32677. Um, so I've noticed a lot of you guys in the comments um, can't understand why I work in Imperials or why I convert from in metric to Imperial. Now, obviously, most of these engine parts we get now are in metric, but we find you know, a lot of our measuring kit is in Imperial. I just find it a lot easier to work in Imperial. When I first started my apprenticeship, I worked in Imperial for the first two or three years, and it was only when I went on to the CNC twin axis machines and that it was all in metric so fortunately i can work in both and i just find it a lot easier to measure in imperial um, so as i say i've set this um, so we've got small hand on the two big hand on the zero and that is 84.5 in metric um, so i'm going to go ahead and measure this so if i measure one that i haven't touched yet you can see it goes well, almost around to the zero, to the one there, and it is little hands on the zero. So that is 84, what it is normally. So this one here that I've honed already, you see I've took, I was quite right actually, I've took about five and a half thou out of that already. So I'm gonna keep on plugging. I've got about another 15 thou to come out of there. coolant through again and the oil through there we go put a decent cut on there now right so we've almost roughed this bore out now as you can see we've got about two thou to come out of there at the top but what tends to happen when you've roughed it out is, as you can see at the bottom, there's about two and a half to three thou to come out. And as you go at the top, it's sort of, there's about one and a half there. So what we have to do is basically just run the stone a bit more down the bottom and middle to make it all even, and then that'll do us. We're almost consistent there now. So what we're going to do is obviously that's warm, so we're going to leave that to cool and continue with the other two on that bank. Right, so as you can see, I've roughed that bank out now. They're all at about a thou and a half, to two thou. We're going to leave them to cool, and then we're going to just finish them off with the with the fine stones. And uh, that's that bank done. Then we're just gonna start the other bank. That's how you do a narrow V. So just a little update on our lovely big 60 ton press. We've had the bed bushes made now. As you can see, we started to put them on. Uh, they're very snug. <laughs> so we sort of, at the minute, we're having to have someone hold the bottom while one of us turns that big nut at the top, which, in turn turns the um turns these big screws and tries to wind them on as i say they're dead tight so i think once we wound them on a bit then backed them off we probably just we you know they'll be okay but we we want them as snug as possible so um we've had to drop drop what we're doing today and try and get this back together as you can see we've got the ram here with new seals in it so that's all been reconditioned so um yeah, once we've got the bed, once we've got those bushes on, 
and we can lower the bed onto the bushes. We can then put the chain on the top. So I'll sort of show you here. There's a big chain and obviously a motor there. And once you've leveled it up, um, that chain sort of turns the screws, which in turn turn inside those bushes, which lift the bed up. So um, yeah, once we've done that, we can drop the, the hydraulic ram onto there, lift it up into its, into its place there and bolt it up, connect all the hydraulics up. And um, yeah, we're back on with that one. I'll tell you what, we don't have missed that because once I've got that done, as I said to you before, I've got a couple of blocks here, which I have bored out. We've got the Honda S2000 block there and we've got the Cosworth YB block here. The liner's all prepped, all ready to go in, but could not do it on that little press. You need, the trouble is with these, although they haven't got very big interference and we put them in with some compound, we need, I need a consistent press to just get them in once the block's heated and the liners are cool. With this thing, the pump action, you've got stop and start motion. It's surprising the Loctite that I use on the bottom of the liners. Um, once that starts gripping with the heat of the block, um, no, it's not worth it. You need a consistent press on that. So it hadn't been worth starting these. But um, yeah, hopefully all being well, get the press finished on Monday. We can, um, I can show you how we press these liners in. Thanks ever so much for watching guys, yet again. Um, very boring job. <laughs> Till another video, remember to subscribe, comment underneath. I'm always interested to read your comments, as I always say. And um, yeah, see you in another video. Cheers, guys. Have a nice weekend.